everyone, welcome to IMHO. I'm Kelsey, that's John Roser. Roser, do you know what this week is or has been? Well, it's NBA training camp week. It's NBA training camp week. So, okay, here's what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, Mike. I love Steven Adams already. <laughs> You're going to be saying mate a lot this year. Uh, you know it, Mike. Can't wait. Really can't wait for that. Um, can't but wait, I know, Mike. okay, I know that you are really big into football. Love football. Yeah, I know. I know that. I know I'm that American. What, <laughs> what American man isn't into football? So, that show Hard Knocks on HBO. Yeah, it's a great show. They go in to the training camps of the football teams. This year, we're going to see an entire freaking season all behind the scenes. Let's talk about NBA teams that yeah. you would have liked in NBA history that you would have liked to have had one of these Hard Knock Inside so, look. So NBA TV did this with the association. Mm -hmm. They called it the association. It wasn't good. It was rather <laughs> boring. Um, and it, so it would be cool if the NBA would let like an HBO or something do this so you could really hear what these players and coaches say every day mm -hmm. and how they sound. Um, the easy thing to say is the bull, like some of the 90s bulls, but we got that with the last dance. We no, kind of sure. got, yeah, right. We got an insight into those teams. Mm -hmm. I think even the bad boys, Pistons, we, we've gotten an insight to them. The Showtime Lakers, there have been so many books and other things written about them that we've, we've kind of know about those even teams. Even like Malice in the Palace, like we've seen yeah, some of those we things. Know, yeah, we know about those teams. Yeah. Um, so for me, I'm going to start something, and we know the Kobe Shaq thing. Phil Jackson wrote about it in the last season in his book there, so we kind of mm -hmm. know about some of that although training camp would be interesting i'm gonna go with larry brown and Allen iverson on the philadelphia 76ers because those two guys it is amazing where they started with each other mm -hmm. and it was i mean that's the whole we talk about practice um <laughs> they butted heads all the time and now they're like Allen iverson says like coach brown helped save my life and you know was him and john thompson are the, the best coaches I've ever had and how much respect they have for each other. But I know those training camps and throughout the whole season had to just be a nightmare for Larry Brown and such a headache dealing with Iverson on a day-to-day -day basis. No, for sure. Okay, I'm going to give you two, think, two ones that I would like for training camp, and then I'm going to give you a couple that I think for the whole season would be great. Okay? All right. All right. Buckle in. It's my turn. Uh, there's no seatbelt <laughs> in this. Hey, I haven't pulled a muscle in my back yet. Hey, knock on wood. Okay, number one, I think the training camp, the first year that KD went to the Warriors, would be very interesting to see. The dynamic of everyone trying to figure themselves out. KD is just like a character himself. It's just so Dray Steph. And, and like, Dray Draymond Green. Who, I mean, who wouldn't want to watch Draymond right, Green, right? I mean, Dray Draymond, yeah. I mean, because you know he's vocal no matter what. Yeah. Okay, the second one, and hear me out on this one. I feel All like right. I have to like defend myself. The 2012-13 Charlotte team. That was the season after they won seven games. Okay. So it would be a way to like show how these guys, the ones who stayed, picked themselves back up after a year that was like really, really, really bad. That's true. I remember uh, there's the Rudy Gay story about that. Like the, the, the Bobcats, they came back on the Grizzlies and the, and the game was in Charlotte. And... Bismack Biombo yelled. The Grizzlies called a quick timeout. The Grizzlies ended up winning the game, but they called a quick timeout. Walking to the sidelines of Bismack Biombo yells at Rudy Gay, this is our house. And Rudy Gay says, you have seven wins. This is everybody's <laughs> house. So, which is an amazing comeback by Rudy Gay. He was always quick like that. You know what? Since you've got me, you've got me kind of thinking about that. Yeah. Here's one I'm just, I'd never thought about it. I will say it. Go. Because this team was bad. And they were on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And everybody had hype. The Kobe Bryant, Steve Nash, Pal Gasol, Dwight Howard Lakers. Okay. That because they ended up being horrible, like really, really but bad. But the hype in preseason was like it was. I mean, look no, the who they have: Steve Nash and Kobe Bryant, Pal Gasol, Dwight Howard, and you know how much Kobe couldn't stand Dwight <laughs> Howard. Like that—that's kind of documented in some things he said to him on the court. Yeah, that'd be good um, one. So yeah, even training camp and then through the season when they're bad, just to see what that was like <laughs> dealing with Kobe on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, that would be a good. Okay, wait, wait, wait. All right, this is another good one. The late 90s, we head over to Portland. 
I don't yeah, know if you the, know oh, about the, 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 jail the jailblazers. We had like they were trying yeah. to smuggle drugs onto the plane. They had an illegal dog fighting ring. They had guys punching each other. They had remember that one guy got pulled over and instead of his ID, he gave like his basketball card. Like mm, I'm on the Blazers. Like what? Yeah. Was that Bonzi? That did, who did no, that? No, no, Bonzi Wells was the one who like the fans all hated him. Remember yeah. like. Who no. gave the basketball card? I don't remember who it was. Oh, I just remember man. the story. I remember that story too. Oh, that's a that's a really good one. Yeah. I'll go something else from the. I've, I'm saving my my favorite one for last. Okay. But I'll go something else from the uh, from the late '90s, early 2000s. Um, we forget how awesome because they never won the title and they were so close and they got screwed in a game seven against the Lakers. Those Sacramento Kings teams, um, Chris Webber. That was Weber and Mike Bibby and Vladi Divac, but I'm going to mm -hmm. go before that with Jay Will coming into the league as a rookie. I remember when they came in, Jay Will in the league as a rookie, and Chris Weber and Vladi Divac and Doug Christie and Paige Stoyakovich, and how oh my gosh, they Doug were Christie. the most fun team in the league to watch. I mean, you go look, go look. I mean, Jay Will, I mean, Chris Weber and Vladi Divac are two of the best passing big men of all time, and then you have Jay Will who just makes some of the most insane, <laughs> crazy passes ever. Grizzlies fans know because he played here. Mm -hmm. But Jay Will was not an easy person to deal with. Chris Webber was not an easy personality to deal with. They had a, they had some difficult guys on that team. Bobby Jackson. Um, but I think those teams were so fun to watch. And I would have loved to have seen an insight as Rick Adelman was coaching them. That, oh, that's a really good one. Because it's the personalities that do it, right? It like, is. Winning's great. Like, if we could go with, like, the Cavs when they, in 2016, when LeBron went back and won. Like, that's cool. It's great to win. But, like, personalities are what would make this show like Kyrie, so good. Now that we know about Kyrie, like, Kyrie, it actually wouldn't be bad just to see what Kyrie does on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> okay. I love you, Kyrie. <laughs> I do. I love Kyrie. Um, another one of those winning ones would be, like, the Heat in 2013. They went on that, like, 27-game yeah. winning streak. But, yeah, it's just winning. So, I've got two left. How many do you have? Uh, I'll just go. I add You're gonna two, your favorite? two, but I'll go with I'll, two. I've got two. But. Okay, I'll finish my two. I'm going like way back when, mm -hmm. uh, 1962, the Philadelphia Warriors. This was the season where Wilt Chamberlain had 45, 50 point games. Okay, well, you just took one of mine. I was Perfect. just gonna say I was just gonna say Wilt Chamberlain because this dude claimed anything. to have slept with over ten thousand women, and so I just want to see the insights into Wilt Chamberlain's everyday life. I don't. I want to know what this guy did. I don't. Like, I, I, yeah, you like, watch that one. I just think well, well, it's like he died earlier, and like we know about Bill Russell. Bill Russell's still alive, but like Wilt Chamberlain is. You know, he's not a, like to be able if you could have followed all of those around, I think it would have been insanely fascinating uh, to know about him. The other one I'm going to go with, and it's my guy. This is uh, your favorite one? Tony. Uh, it, well, the Wilt Chamberlain was my favorite one. <laughs> um, you know, there's always any of those teams from the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. because, like, all the players were on drugs, apparently. Well, and we just don't know so much we about them, right? right? Like, know. they don't we, have we, social media, yeah. obviously, in the 60s. I will go with um, just because of the personalities and the stories that Tony has told us. That 2008 Celtics championship team. <laughs> I mean, those guys are Rondo, Tony, Paul Pierce, KG, Big Baby Davis, Kendrick Perkins, Big Baby. Leon Poe, um, Eddie House, James Posey. Like, they had some, <laughs> they had some, what do they say, dogs, or Devin dogs. would say, bros, like in that locker room. And like, Doc Rivers. You know, half the time he's like, "Oh my God, I what am I dealing with right here?" But those guys were—I mean, they were dogs, and they were bad. They were beasts, and like, just—you know—they've got a ton of like Tony told us stories about them boxing, and Big Baby Davis knocking him out, like in boxing matches. I so, would love like, to watch that. Actually. I mean, you know the stuff that went on in that locker room. Okay, wait. Which is okay, hilarious. okay. Here's my last one then, because you have gone perfectly into my very last right. one. Things that happened in the locker room. This is not funny. I should not be laughing. But the Wizards that oh, year, <laughs> that year and Gilbert Arenas, where they pulled pistols out on yeah. each other. I mean, I wouldn't want to be the camera guy like filming this for our entertainment, but like, wouldn't you like to be a fly on the wall when like all of this is going on? Well, a hundred percent. Another reason I should have also said that one too because. The, my favorite rap line ever that mentioning a, that mentions like you know a sports reference is Rick Ross saying, "Better check the stats. We fill in arenas, and I got the Gats, Gilbert Arenas." It's like one of my favorite rap lines Mike of Stop. all time. All right, <laughs> it's not really funny. Long. It's not funny. It's funny. It's not funny. <clears throat> Javar Crittenden is in jail for murder. Well, <laughs> that's I <IMA> too. <laughs>
<laughs> See you guys next week on IMHO.